This is Ingebi, the traditional surgeon, a very important person for my people, the closer people. The Ingebi is the one who performs circumcision in our initiation ceremony. It's through this ceremony that a closer boy becomes a man. Right now, there's much talk of failed circumcisions, of infections and deaths. But this Ingebi, Meli Bunga Nobinjan, has a reputation for being good at what he does. My name is Zukile Mangunga. I was born in the Eastern Cape, but now live in Johannesburg. I have a family here and a job. But today, I'm going back to my roots near Willowhead. I've read in the newspapers that our young men are going to hospital because of forced circumcisions. I read that 19 initiates died after forced circumcisions last year. This concerns me because I care deeply about our customs. So I'm on a journey home to find out what the problems are. I'm working with special assignment who want to help me tell my story. This is the place where I grew up. I think about my life as a boy here, how I used to play and ride homemade bicycles. The people who live here were very good to me. I also remember when the time came for me to be initiated. It happened in this area. We went to the bush and were circumcised. Then we stayed there for about a month. We were forbidden to see anybody except the Amakangata, the guardians, who looked after us and taught us discipline. It was very good. But in some places, the tradition is under pressure. I'm going to Bisho now to talk to people there about these problems. On my way to Bisho, I met these Amakwala. They've just become men. And they are back in town. <laughs> they are wearing special clothes. You feel so dignified when you wear them. It's a whole new world out there, full of cars and girls. Like in the girlfriend, boy, so boy like Okay. The community now respects these young men. Their clothes are a sign of their status. They have given away their boyhood clothes. The new outfits are gifts from their parents. They now have responsibilities. And they have no time 
Tell me, how do you treat someone who has been circumcised in hospital? He's not a man. Mm. Just tell him. No, you can't wear those clothes. Because you're not a man. Don't wear your pie. You wear your flower pie. You wear your lindos of pie. When you come back, you wear your lindos of pie. You wear your special. I think I said, 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 I News has spread about this meeting in Bishop. Many have traveled far to be here to discuss the problems around circumcision. In particular, new laws and new methods. It is considered an important meeting because the king of the Amakakabe is also present. The meeting starts, but the subject of circumcision makes people uneasy. And the men are uncomfortable because men are not supposed to speak of these things in front of women. So the women are asked to leave. They are upset and hurt. So they console themselves outside. Dr. Mamisa Chabula explains to the women that they must give the men space. It's part of the women's strategy to make men feel comfortable. It will do no good to fight with men about circumcision. It will just create more problems. Yeah. Mamu do you think, um, in your view, women should have more say when it comes, particularly when it comes to circumcision? Luckily, I can't say uh, more say. Just I can just say 50-50. Because when the problem comes, the mother of the child will also be un involved there to decide what to do. As I, uh, I told you that I'm the only parent. So if the problem comes, it will come to me. That's why I, I can say 50-50. The government is trying to bring changes to the way circumcision is done. But today, the discussion is inconclusive. So I decided to go to Port Elizabeth to visit Dr. Mamisa and to ask her what she thinks. I think I understand how men feel because it is an indictment on them because they are the custodians of custom, but they have actually something has gone wrong in their looking after the custom and the tradition. Dr. Chabula saw her first case of a botched circumcision in 1988, the same year I was initiated. She sees the infections, the mutilations, and the pain firsthand. She wants people to understand how bad the problems are. Many don't believe her. You know, the boys who go to hospital are the tip of the iceberg. What people are doing now, these boys, if they don't heal after four weeks, they take them out. You know? Saturday, nice ululation and jubilation. Monday evening, they are at the surgery. And one has to attend to unhealed wounds. Those are not recorded in the hospital statistics. But that is the trend. Now, how do the boys listen to all the words of wisdom when they are in pain? They don't. 
and we can because we've got all the I mean we're nice and south, you know, with all the traditional beer and so on. So everything is good about us, but we don't feel for that boy who's in pain and doesn't listen to anything, he's waiting for Monday to come. What I'm saying is that the public is running away from facing the reality of the situation. If it was your son who had a complete penectomy, if it was your son who had a partial penectomy, if it was your son who died or you who died, you wouldn't be saying anything because you know what, it, what, what has gone wrong. And uh, it's us as public refusing to admit that things have gone wrong and they've gone terribly wrong. These are the pictures. Dr. Chawula insists on showing the world to bring her point forward. I'm now at Cecilia Makiwane Hospital in Islamia because I've heard there are sick initiates here and I want to talk to them myself. But when they see us, they hide from our cameras and we must get the information from the neutron. So far we have, we had admitted 36 in our ward and four died. In fact, two came in as dead on arrival and the other two died in various wards. When the boys come in, most of, in fact, some of them are having a retention of urine. That is, they suffer from dehydration. They are not uh, having septic circumcision. For those boys, we only insert a Foley's catheter. This is inserted through the penis, to the urethra, and then to the bladder, so that it draws urine from the bladder. Isn't that and then painful? Then is it, it is, it is painful. We start removing the catheter okay. before the time. But a catheter is the best case scenario. The worst is when the penis gets gangrenous from infections or a tight bandage and has to be cut off, leaving nothing. It's just an opening, a urethral opening. So they are unable to, 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 to pass urine standing. Mm. They have to squat because they, 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 there is a, it's just a hole. Mm. I can put it that way. It's just a hole. I asked the matron why they are avoiding the cameras. They are refusing to talk to you today because they feel destroyed and they don't want their voices to be heard by the communities who will regard them as outcasts. I walk past the initiate who is critically ill, lying unconscious in his bed. I've just been to the ward where they keep the initiate and I've spoken to some of them. And um, I've spoken to the matron as well, but I was very disturbed when I saw the one who is critical. I can imagine what's going through in his mind, especially when he wakes up and finds out that he's in hospital. And the fact remains that when he wakes up, he will find out that he doesn't have Ubu Dot. I also understand why some of them don't want to talk to me because they are angry, very angry. And I can imagine what's going to happen when they go back to the community, the pressure that they are going to bear from their peers and from their friends. I see them going back to the community. I see them facing the challenge of not having what it takes. I see them have to face the reality of life. I'm at the cemetery, not far from the hospital. I'm looking for the gravestone of the young boy who lost his penis through initiation. The family is still in trauma and refuses to speak to us. He committed suicide and is buried here. The shame was too much. But life goes on and change is possible as long as people fight for it. The problem is the surgery. And I feel 
intervention can be made there because it's surgery. So let's look at a way which is quite something which will help and reduce the death and the, and the mutilations of our children. Dr. Chabula is trying to introduce a Malaysian invention to South African circumcision schools. It is called the Tara clamp. Doctors say it's safe and can be used in the bush. She went to Malaysia with a delegation from the Eastern Cape to test it. When you have to do the circumcision, you insert the front part of the penis inside that of the organ. And then you put in the foreskin and you pull it there. And then once you pull the, the, the sides of this, it becomes actually very tight. And you clamp it close. And when you have clamped it, you then cut with a blade because I mean, it's easier surgically to do it with the scissors, but for traditional reasons, you then cut with a blade and they do whatever they do, how they dispose of it uh, at, at the bush, you know, and then, but you leave the clamp on for five to six days. And then once you have closed the clamp, it doesn't open. And then after six days, there is a membrane there which you cut open and you actually dismantle it and disconnect it. And once you have done that, then when you have cut it, you know, then this part remains still on the organ. Then you make it wet and it pulls off and the thing is healed. It's no different. It's just a question of change. The government wants to bring change by making it possible to find or jail negligent traditional surgeons as one way of solving the problem. Another could be with this terror claim if people can accept it. But old habits die hard. Okay. If you want to continue with traditional circumcision, the initiate must be disciplined, the, 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 the surgeon must be disciplined, the, what they call in that proclamation the traditionalness must be disciplined. Mm -hmm. The parents must be disciplined. Now, if, if none of those people are disciplined, we are going to have many of them die. They must take stock of themselves and look at their, at their cultures and look at how they can sharpen their cultures such that you, know, you can prevent a further escalation of these kinds of disasters. So I went to the man who knows the most about what happens behind the circumcision curtain, the famous Ingali. Melibunga Nobinjani. He has an excellent record as a traditional surgeon. He is not that interested in the Taraklam, but he supports the setting up of circumcision schools to make circumcision safer. I decided to show him Dr. Mamisa's upsetting for the kids. is there. We are going to Chant <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry.
Melibunga showed me his circumcision school. He has adapted customs by giving his abakweta a special hat to stay in. If these changes can be made, surely other changes can be made to save lives. Zuki, you know, this introduction of the Tara claim reminds me of when I tried to introduce the concept of one boy, one blade to the traditional surgeons in my area. Initially, they refused to accept it, you know, and saying that the other guys were given by their forefathers and so on. But uh, when they saw some of the slides which showed them of mutilations, they then admitted, yes, we have seen this, but I can assure you, you can have all the traditional surgeons and attendants of this province in one room, none will stand up and admit to having been responsible for a mutilation. In fact, uh, we, we cling to our culture. And at the same time, our culture is having some difficulties. I think it, is, it will be proper that we change a little bit if, if we don't move away from our culture. On my way home, I see Abakweta living between the highway and the suburb of Mdanzani, very close to the people and the traffic. They ask for money, for cigarettes. Things have changed indeed. As we drive home, my mind is full of pictures of the past five days. If you did not know my culture before, perhaps you understand it better now. If you are of my culture, perhaps you need to understand more. Maybe my story will make you angry. Maybe it will make you think.